Today I'm going to show you a really cheap way to get the flash off your camera. If you watch any tutorials on flash photography, very quickly we talk about having off-camera flashes to get much better light. And this means you can change the direction of flash compared to the direction that your camera is pointing. Because when that flash is on top of the camera, it's pointing exactly the same way, unless you bounce it off different walls or different objects. Now, up until a few years ago, there was only really one company doing this, and you had to buy a set of pocket wizards to be able to get your flash off your camera and to be able to control them from your camera. But nowadays, there are a lot of different options. Now, if your camera has a flash on the top of it, you can use this to trigger a flash head in slave mode. And that is by far the cheapest way to do it, but it's not a true wireless system. So let's say you have a flash head like this one from Yongnuo and you want to get it off camera. For a small amount, you can buy this wireless trigger system, which is these two. So you've got your bit that goes on top of the camera and then the bit that goes underneath the flash. This will talk to this and tell it when to fire. I've used this system on a few professional jobs and it works surprisingly well. So all you do is with your hot shoe, you get this one with a button on the top and that slides into your hot shoe. Then you get this second one and that goes onto the bottom of your flash. Then all you need is a cold shoe mount to mount this on the top of a light stand. And it also has a quarter inch thread on the bottom so you can actually mount it directly to the top of the light stand. But if you have one of these brackets, you can mount it to the top of that. So in having it like that, you can angle it to whatever you want. But in having this wireless system in here, it works really well and it means that you can put this flash wherever you want. Now, if you're using the Sony mirrorless camera, you will have to turn live view display off, especially if you're not using much of your ambient light. Also, you will need to know your maximum sync speed of your camera. So you don't go over this and start getting those black strips along the top or along the bottom of your images. But when you do know your sync speed, you can get some great shots and you can really start to angle and model your light without being restricted to having the flash on top of that camera. If you have the a7 III, I found you can take your shutter speed up to 1 200th of a second and that works really well. However, with other systems, you may only be able to take them to around about 1 1 60th of a second. So if you've got a different camera to the a7 III, just Google sync speed of your own camera. And if you're not sure what sync speed is, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description to a video telling you all about it. Now, as a bonus, this flash trigger can also be used as a remote shutter release if you have a Sony DSLR, a Canon or a Nikon camera, but not if you have a Sony mirrorless camera. But today I'm focusing on wireless triggers for your flash. Basically, it will work with any camera that has a hot shoe. And if you have multiple flashes, you can buy extra receivers. And as long as you make sure they're on the same channel, it will trigger all of them at the same time. To change channels, you have these four switches along the top. And all you need to do is make sure they're exactly the same from the trigger to the receiver. If they're clicked on different numbers, that'll mean they'll be on different channels. When you're using it as a flash, this button on the top of the one that sits in your hot shoe on your camera is a test button. So you can press that to make sure your flash is firing and to make sure the wireless system is talking to the receiver. For it to work, you'll need four AAA batteries. Each unit takes two AAA batteries. So if you get a pack of four, they'll work in it and they'll last quite a long time. Now there are a few downsides to this, but they're not as bad as you think. If you look at the trigger, it only has one pin on the bottom. So no matter what system you're using, it will be a manual flash system. But like I've said in all of my tutorials with flash heads, I much prefer using manual flash systems anyway. I have my camera in manual and I have the flashes in manual. So I control everything. I control all of the settings and I don't have any systems that might change the power of that flash. And also, when you're learning about flash photography, it's best to learn with everything in manual, because then you'll start to understand how all of your settings in your camera relate to the settings in your flash. 
and how if you change one, how it will change the look of your image. Now, if you're not sure about this, but want to learn more about flash photography, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description to another of my tutorials. The other downside to this system is that you'll have to change your flash power at the flash head itself. So if your flash is buried in a soft box, this can be a little bit annoying. But say if you're photographing smoke, like in my smoke photography tutorial, this just uses a bare flash head. So you can quickly go to the back of your flash, change the power of your flash, and then carry on shooting. So as wireless systems go, this is a fantastic introduction to wireless flash heads at such a small cost. And if you're interested in this, I've put a link in the description below so you can go and see it for yourself. And if you don't have a flash head, but are interested in getting one, I've linked some at different price points below in the description as well. It's well worth getting into, especially if you're stuck at home. And even if you're not, flash photography is really interesting. And once you get into it and understand it, it's really fascinating. And having a set of these wireless triggers really opens up so many different possibilities. You can really start to create some amazing photos once you understand how it all works. Now, if you want to learn more about the basics of flash photography, click on this next video here. And to take your portraits to another level, click on this one down here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials in photography. I'll see you next time.